Right now, we are following breaking news out of the Middle East that might have an impact on your price at the pump. The latest fallout from an airstrike ordered by President Trump. And Madison police are asking for your help this morning in the search for a teen who has been missing for weeks. Plus, as the FDA rolls out bans on vaping products, we're talking about how e-cigarette companies are still targeting your kids. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, January 3rd. I'm Josh Spreider. And I'm Leah Linshide. We start with a breaking update out of the Middle East this morning, where tensions are high after the U.S. killed a top Iranian general in an airstrike. The U.S. Embassy in Baghdad is urging all citizens to leave Iraq immediately. CBS's Laura Podesta has the latest. These images from the Iraqi government show the aftermath of a U.S. drone strike that killed a top Iranian general. Overnight, Iranian state TV announced the death of General Qasem Soleimani. The 62-year-old led a special forces unit of Iran's elite revolutionary guards. Six others were also killed in the strike near Baghdad's international airport. The Pentagon said President Trump directed it. In a statement, the Department of Defense said Soleimani was actively developing plans to attack American diplomats and service members in Iraq and throughout the region. <laughs> Secretary of State Mike Pompeo tweeted this video with the caption, Iraqis, Iraqis dancing in the street for freedom, thankful that General Soleimani is no more. President Trump simply tweeted an American flag. The statement from the Pentagon claims Soleimani approved this week's violent protests at the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. That prompted the U.S. military to deploy hundreds of troops to the Middle East. Defense Secretary Mark Esper said there are indications militias loyal to Iran are planning further attacks. Do I think they may do something? Yes, and they will likely regret it. Iran's defense minister released a statement saying, quote, a crushing revenge will be taken for Soleimani's unjust assassination. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Reactions to the strike were quick to come in from Capitol Hill. Republicans like Senator Lindsey Graham applauded the president's action. Meanwhile, Democrats like House Speaker Nancy Pelosi were more cautious, saying it risks escalating tensions to the point of no return. New this morning, Democratic candidates are also tweeting their responses to the airstrike. The candidates widely agree that Soleimani was dangerous, but believe the strike will escalate tensions in the area. Joe Biden compared it to President Trump, quote, tossing a stick of dynamite into a tinderbox. Now those higher tensions in the Middle East following the airstrike could cost you more at the pump. Oil prices are surging this morning in response to the strike, jumping more than 4% overnight. That's due to the uncertainty from global investors who are trying to anticipate Iran's response to the attack. Previously, Iran had threatened the supply of oil in the Persian Gulf, which is where roughly 20% of the world's oil travels through. 6.03, your time now. Hattie's here with a look at your first alert forecast, the day to get your car wash in, huh? Yeah, I think so. The forecast's looking pretty quiet. I've actually updated those snow chances for tonight. Looking pretty small for southern Wisconsin, so go ahead, do it. Wash the car. And if you can't get it done today, you have a free pass for the weekend. The weather stays pretty quiet around here. Take a look at our weather track this morning. A lot of clouds in the area, but no precipitation falling from those clouds. We are going to stick with mostly cloudy skies today. Temperatures in the low 30s this morning, only climbing a couple of degrees today to the mid 30s. Still above normal for this time of the year, but about 10 degrees cooler than it was yesterday. Here's a look at your traffic maps this morning. Pretty quiet right now on all the area roads. Just a few brake lights showing up on Stoughton Road at the Beltline. Otherwise, I did look around all of southern Wisconsin. There are no accidents to report at this time. Coming up in weather in just a few minutes, we will talk about those snow chances tonight. A small chance in the forecast, but less than what we were thinking yesterday. I can hear my car breathing the <laughs> sigh of relief this morning. Thank you. It's yes. dirty, huh? It's really dirty. You know me, I don't like a dirty car, so. Josh's definition of dirty has That's to be a little less than That's people. true. That is true, but good news, after that warm weather yesterday, the roads are clean. So if you wash, it will stay clean. Green lights all over. Hattie, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. 6.04, your time now. The Australian
Ukrainian Navy is rescuing hundreds of people from beaches today as tens of thousands are being told to flee from the worsening wildfires. They're headed down the Victoria coast this morning, a 16-hour trip for many of them. As more than 200 fires burn, residents and tourists are being warned that it will get worse by tomorrow with strong winds and more hot weather forecasted. Some locals are just thankful to be headed elsewhere. Yeah, it's too smoky. Can't do anything. It's not fun anymore. It's just scary waiting. So, yeah, pretty keen to get out. Scared because it's pretty oh, no, big, and but I'm just happy to get out of here. This year's wildfire season is the worst on record. At least 17 people have died. More than 1,400 homes have been destroyed. And nearly a half billion animals have been killed so far. To campaign 2020 coverage this morning, the field of Democratic candidates is thinning out ahead of this month's debate. Julian Castro is ending his campaign after failing to gain traction in a large field of candidates. He tweeted out a video saying with only a month to the Iowa caucuses, it's not the right time. The former Housing and Urban Development Secretary was the only Latino to run for president this time around and ran a progressive campaign focused on immigration, housing and policing. Meanwhile, in Wisconsin, a conservative law firm is asking a judge to find the Wisconsin Elections Commission in contempt unless it clears more than 200,000 voters from the rolls. They're also asking to fine commission members $2,000 a day. Last month, a judge ordered to purge voters who might have moved and didn't respond within 30 days to a notification from the Elections Commission. The bipartisan committee has deadlocked twice on attempts to remove voters while an appeal is pending. 606 your time now. The FDA is cracking down on flavored e-cigarette products with a ban on fruit and mint flavors. But some e-cig companies are still marketing to kids. Our Christina Laurie joins us to explain this morning. Christina, good morning to you. Josh and Leah, good morning. The numbers are startling. The CDC has confirmed 55 vaping related deaths happened in 2019 alone. But even as these new regulations begin and e-cig makers insist they're not marketing to kids here in the U.S., some are offering academic scholarships targeted directly at high school kids. Reuters reports 40 scholarships are being offered to high school and college students from vaping related distributors, manufacturers and review websites. The the journal Tobacco Control found these scholarships range from $300 to $5,000 and most require an essay submission with most prompts relating to e-cigarettes or the benefits of vaping. According to the CDC, 5% of middle schoolers and 21% of high school students reported in 2019 that they had used e-cigarettes in just the past month. Now health officials say it can be hard to tell if your kid has been vaping, but if your son or daughter has a sweet smell, changes in thirst and taste, has frequent nosebleeds, or has an unexplained cough, they might be vaping. Coming up at 630, we'll talk about ways you, as a parent, can talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping, and the list certainly is long. Yeah, this is stuff, obviously. Obviously, you want to know about, and it's. I think that we're still seeing just the beginning of right. all of this coverage, too. And many of us who don't vape can be a little bit ignorant. These cartridges, they look like those flash drives that mm -hmm. we used to right. carry around. They can be hidden right in plain sight. All right, Christina Laurie, thank you. Thanks, Christina. Thank you. More local news now. Madison police are asking for your help finding a girl who's been missing now for two weeks. MissingKids.org reports Anaya Coons is a runaway. The 13-year-old is 5'3 and weighs around 155 pounds. Police believe she could be with a woman in the Madison area. They say she could also be using an alias last name, Ruiz. If you know anything about where Anaya might be, you're asked to call the number on your screen. You can find all of that information up on channel3000.com as well. The Indiana man arrested in connection with the 1994 murder investigation in Madison is pleading not guilty. Willie Coleman is accused of murdering 40-year-old Lulu Cunnigan. Police were sent to Freeport Road on Madison's west side on November 4th of that year and found Cunnigan with serious injuries. She was pronounced dead at the scene. The 52-year-old was arrested after police say a DNA match linked Cunnigan to the crime. The man accused of fatally shooting his sister on Christmas Eve is being ordered to take a mental competency evaluation. Joseph Green's attorneys requested the exam before a preliminary hearing, which would determine if there's enough evidence for a trial. The 57-year-old faces a first-degree intentional homicide charge for the death of his 63-year-old sister, Sheila Green. Police say he shot her at least 15 times at her home on South Midvale Boulevard. All right, still ahead this morning, we are taking a look at some of the major flooding that's hitting a Wisconsin city hard to start the new year. Plus, Hattie's tracking the return of some snow showers for some in southern Wisconsin. Your weekend forecast coming up next on News 3 Now this morning.
Good morning from the Hattio Patio. Not terribly cold outside this morning, although it's not going to be as mild as it was yesterday. Felt more like March yesterday than January, and those mild temperatures really did a number on the snowpack. We don't have any snow left here in the backyard weather patio, and maybe your yard looks the same. Looking pretty bare again across southern Wisconsin. There is some snow off to the north and west. Right now it's just moving into far western Minnesota, but some changes over the last 24 hours have been made to the forecast right now. It looks like that storm system is going to track mainly to our west. Let's put our future track forecast model into motion and you can see by 8 p.m. tonight there is a small chance for some light snow in just far southwestern Wisconsin. As we go through the overnight hours in the bulk of the precipitation stays to our west. So there may be a few snowflakes west of Dane County, but again those light snow accumulations likely to remain across Minnesota and Iowa over the next 24 hours. We will have plenty of clouds though. Unfortunately, the clouds are staying put today. There aren't very many holes in that cloud cover and it extends all the way back into southern Canada this morning. So we are stuck under mostly cloudy skies. Here's a look at our current conditions in Madison down another degree to 31 right now. Northwesterly winds send that wind chill into the middle 20s. Here's a look at temperatures across southern Wisconsin. Most spots are in the low 30s. Janesville is actually back up to 36, but it's 29 in the Dells, only 32 in Mineral Point as well as Platteville. Winds are light from the northwest, generally 10 miles an hour or less, so wind chills are just a few degrees cooler than the actual air temperature. Feels like it's in the middle 20s for most of us this morning. Your future track forecast model is pretty spot on with this storm track later on today. It's keeping skies cloudy. Temperatures will be very similar to what they are right now at lunchtime. Our highs today just in the mid 30s. Again, watch this evening with that chance for snow on the far left side of the map. Maybe Maybe a few snow showers clipping far southwestern Wisconsin, but most of that precipitation staying out of the area. Skies are actually expected to turn partly sunny on Saturday. So nice to see the sunshine this weekend. 32 for the high tomorrow. Get ready for a pretty windy day coming on Sunday. A little bit warmer though with a high of 38. Then we're up and down as we head through next week. A couple of days in the 20s, but we do have a 40 degree forecast on Thursday as well. Now it's time to get a look at your first alert traffic maps this morning. We'll send it over to Stacy K for all the details. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning. There may still be just a little bit of a backup to the I-90 ramp. Otherwise, it's a quiet start to the morning. No problems on the Beltline in either direction. Other roads here in Dane County are looking good. Just some of the usual minor slowdowns at Stoughton approaching the Beltline. And Park Street is starting to get busy. East Washington, not too bad yet. And other main roads heading into the city, moving along at the posted speeds. No crashes or delays. With your first alert traffic, I'm Stacy K. Thank you very much, Stacy, And thank you, Hattie. A city here in Wisconsin is working to recover after some major flooding this week. Some businesses in Oconto are temporarily closed and residents are frustrated with the damage the flooding has left in its wake. The National Weather Service says an ice jam caused the flood emergency and now the Red Cross is working to help residents during the cleanup. This is the worst I've seen it ever. I never been flooded out anywhere. I, it's just heartbreaking to know that a lot of people lost a lot of things and how I'm fortunate enough to not have lost a lot of things, but if just a few personal items. A barge is set to break up some of the ice tomorrow, which will help get rid of dams that are pushing water into people's homes. A popular business is lucky to be intact this morning as ice shoves are once again a problem along Lake Winnebago shoreline. The owner of Lakeview Supper Club says he wasn't home when the ice shoves pushed onto shore, but friends who were taking videos of it told him what was happening. The shove stopped only a few feet away from his back dining room. For this time of the year, it is extremely exceptional. Um, as you can see, especially in the highest part, it's probably twice as high as the building is. Not too far away to County Park, the ice shoves have become an early tourist attraction with piles over 20 feet high running up and down the shoreline. Speaking of ice, it is that time of year for ice fishing, but officials are reminding anyone going out there that conditions are always changing. The Wausau Fire Department is teaching new operators how to use their airboat in case of an emergency. 
They say their team needs to be able to adapt if someone happens to fall through. The department is reminding everyone that going out on the ice puts themselves and first responders at risk. Now this comes just after an SUV fell through the ice on Lake Wausau on New Year's Day. That SUV is still in the water this morning, but the owners are confident it'll be removed within the next few days. The DNR says it's the owner's full responsibility to clean up the mess, which could cost up to $10,000. Luckily, no one was hurt. All right, 618 on your Friday. Still ahead for us this morning. It's a new year at the box office, and our film critic, Will Loper, is bringing us a look at the first major release, The Grudge. Oh, boy. <laughs> and Hattie's also tracking your weekend forecast. Some might see a few flurries later today. We'll have your forecast when News for Now this morning continues. It's your Six twenty one on your Friday morning and a cloudy start out there, but still really not that cold for this time of the year. It could be so much worse, guys. <laughs> so I guess we'll count our blessings. We're not going to see a lot of sunshine today. That's the bummer. But temperatures are starting in the uh, 30s, 29 in the Dells, but 31 here in Madison and all across the area, generally low 30s, which is actually warmer than the normal high for this time of the year. So if your kids have school today, they don't need quite as many layers. Again, mostly cloudy skies are expected through the day. Temperatures will top just a couple of degrees warmer than we are right now, right around 34 degrees. Have a wonderful Friday. This weekend, a reboot of a remake of a Japanese horror film is out in theaters. Interesting. The movie is The Grudge, and our film critic Will Loper is here with a preview. 
Interesting is very kind <laughs> words, Leah. That's what I thought. Uh, yes, of course you guys remember, I remember, we all remember the J-horror craze in the early 2000s that involved endless American remakes of Japanese horror films like The Ring and One Missed Call. Let's hope for all our sakes a new wave isn't starting. Here's a look at The Grudge. This is Detective Muldoon. This is Peter Spencer. Something happened to me at 44 Rayburn Drive. The detective takes on a case and discovers there are evil spirits involved. And unfortunately, you just can't arrest a ghost. Hello? I went to the house. Hello? Police department. The Grudge is rated R. I think something followed me home. Mommy? What's going on? What's wrong? We need to leave right now. Hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was supposed to be another jump scare at the end there, but I'm like, everyone's waking up. You know, you don't want to wake don't up kill us. that way. Yeah, Heavens. yeah, yeah. Was a scare. I don't know. Josh is, <laughs> Josh is not just right out now. of it. He's not yeah. into it, yeah. But we were just talking about how that wave of just endless sort of, and they were just like cash grabs at some point of these Japanese horror films just getting remade. Uh, like the ring uh, you like, mentioned, you liked the I ring. I like the ring. I like the ring a lot. But then with you know uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar grudge, yes. I wasn't a big fan of. Uh, I didn't mind it, but this you're already making remakes of that. That was ten years ago. <laughs> no, and so and it's getting horrible reviews too. Mm. It's mm. January where studios uh, give their less desirable products and sort of. Dump that out. All right, B. All right, thank you, Will. Yeah, thank you, guys. <laughs> well, the race to the Oscars begins this weekend with the Golden Globes. Oh, yeah. Streaming services dominated the nominations, with Netflix bringing in a whopping 34 nominations across film and TV categories. Netflix originals, The Two Popes, The Irishman, and Marriage Story each received a nomination in the Best Drama category. They're also strong contenders for Best Picture at the Academy Awards next month. When it comes to the acting categories, history could be made this weekend. Aquafina is projected to win Best Actress in a Musical or Comedy for her role in The Farewell. If she wins, she will be the first Asian woman to do so. Pretty exciting there. All right, 624 right now. Still ahead for us. We've got the top three things you need to know this morning before heading out the door. And we're telling you about new federal restrictions on e-cigarette products and how the government hopes to curb the teen vaping epidemic. That's next on News 3 Now this morning.
from the Channel3000.com Alert Center. This is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, folks, and thanks for staying with us on this Friday, January 3rd. I'm Leah Lynchide. And I'm Josh Breider. Let's get right to your top three headlines this morning, and we start with breaking news. All Americans are now being advised to leave Iraq, as the U.S. Defense Department says it has killed a high-level Iranian general. It happened in an attack at Baghdad International Airport. The department says the military, at the direction of President Trump, conducted, quote, a defensive action by killing Qasem Soleimani. In a statement, the Pentagon said the general was actively developing plans to attack American diplomats and service members throughout the region. The U.S. says Soleimani approved the siege of the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. The second story we're following this morning, Madison police are asking for help finding a girl who's been missing now for two weeks. 13-year-old Anaya Coons is around 5 foot 3 and weighs 5, 155 pounds. Police believe she could be with a woman in the Madison area and they could be using an alias last name, Ruiz. You're asked to call the number we have up on channel3000.com if you have any information. Wildfires continue to ravage parts of Australia this morning, claiming at least 17 lives so far and forcing thousands to flee. More than 380 homes have been destroyed on the southern coast of New South Wales just this week. As he toured the devastation in one town, Prime Minister Scott Morrison was called an idiot and other insults. Those are your top three headlines on your Friday. Hattie's here now with a look at our first alert weather and traffic. Hey, Hattie. Good morning, Lee and Josh. We're starting with cloudy skies this morning. In fact, across all of southern Wisconsin, there's a thick blanket of clouds. Here's a look at weather track. No precipitation falling from those clouds, though. Just mainly a dry day in our forecast today. As you head out the door, plan on cooler temperatures. It's definitely not going to be as warm as it was yesterday, but temps will stay in the low to mid 30s throughout the day. Our chances for snow are pretty limited and not until late tonight. Let's check on those first alert traffic maps this morning. Getting a little busier on the Beltline. We're starting to see a few delays right around Stoughton Road, but no other major issues to report right now. Looks like you're still traveling at posted speeds as you head into Madison. Coming up in weather, we will talk about cooler temperatures heading into the upcoming weekend and that chance for snow, as well as some pretty windy conditions developing for Sunday. All right, thank you very much, Hattie. So the FDA is cracking down on flavored e-cigarette products. A full ban on some of the most popular products comes shortly after President Trump raised the age to use tobacco products nationwide. Christina Laurie is here with how this could impact Southern Wisconsin. Hi, Christina. Hi, Josh and Lee. It's going to impact us here in Wisconsin and across the entire country. Companies that make, sell, and distribute most fruit and mint flavored cartridge based vaping products now have just 30 days to comply with the FDA's ban. But the new, the new restrictions include some notable exceptions. First, they allow tobacco and menthol flavored products. They also apply only to cartridge based products, which the FDA says are easier for teenagers to buy and hide. These new rules come just weeks after Congress announced it will raise the minimum smoking and vaping age to 21 years old. That law is expected to go into effect later this year and will cover all tobacco products. According to the CDC, 5% of middle schoolers and 21% of high school students reported vaping in 2019, with the majority saying they use cartridge-based products. There were 55 vaping-related deaths just last year. If you find your son or daughter has been or still is vaping, health officials from the CDC recommend staying calm rather than shaming them. They suggest sharing information about what it can do to their lungs and their bodies and, of course, talking about these new laws. The CDC says the chemical vitamin E acetate found in some vaping products is closely associated with the deaths and illnesses. And there's been so many studies lately, all of them. There's no benefit to vaping. It's so interesting because as you alluded to, we don't necessarily know a lot about what this could do to you other than that it's very harmful. And what we do know is that it's already caused deaths, whereas smoking, those deaths take a lot longer to build up. Mm -hmm. A lot of families asking questions. Christina Laurie, thank you. Thank you. All right, new this morning, a group of Delta Airlines employees are suing Southern Wisconsin-based Land's End, saying the uniforms provided by the company made them sick. The lawsuit from more than 500 Delta employees claims the uniforms worn by flight attendants and some ground workers caused them to develop health issues, including difficulty breathing, fatigue, and rashes after wearing the uniforms that were introduced last year. The suit claims employee tests found high levels of chemicals and heavy metals in the uniforms. Delta says it also tested the uniforms and believes they're safe. Land's End tells CBS News they don't respond to pending litigation. A community in rural Rock County has its fair share of farmers, but it doesn't have a grocery store. 
Right now, Orfordville is trying to prevent becoming a food desert in a unique way. The community turned a former gas station in town into a full-service grocery store that includes a drive through The store's owner works to stock the shelves with products from more than a dozen local farmers, allowing them to reach customers in a way they aren't typically able to. Families living outside Wisconsin cities might have an even tougher time finding a doctor in the future. WPR is reporting on a shortage of med students coming from rural areas across the country. They made up less than 5% of all new med students in 2017. Both of Wisconsin's medical schools do have programs designed to graduate more rural doctors. Still, the state's dealing with a shortage of primary care doctors and other types of physicians. Right now, 20 of Wisconsin's 72 counties have no practicing psychiatrists. A student in Oregon is asking its school district to end an assignment that requires classes to count their calories. The 15-year-old says the assignment caused her to develop an eating disorder. Evelyn Becker started an online petition calling on the district to put an end to the assignment. It's up to about 500 signatures this morning. Evelyn says this assignment is a breeding ground for low self-esteem in students and hopes her petition can start a conversation about changing the way health and nutrition is taught. I do believe that there is a way to teach the importance of nutrition without having it be based on a person. Um, I've been saying that this needs to be looked at more as a math problem than a person problem. There is nothing wrong with the person, and I think that that is where that assignment tends to slip up. Oregon's superintendent responded in a statement saying as we prepare for the upcoming school year, we will look at the entire curriculum to make sure that it's moving in the right direction, adding we don't want a single student to feel uncomfortable in a class they're taking. Some of you are probably in the first few days of your New Year's resolutions and it turns out psychologists say there's a good reason many of us still make them. It has to do with a lot of us reflecting on the past year, this week and thinking about the things that made us unhappy. Psychologists say it's normal to want to change those things, but we should think about why we feel that way before we try to change a behavior. When it comes to actually keeping those resolutions, it's important to not get dejected if we struggle with them at the start. Giving yourself that sort of forgiveness and extending yourself that grace will keep you motivated and it will keep you from sort of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Psychologists say resolutions work the best when you set realistic short-term goals and reward yourself when you meet them. All right, 635 on your Friday. Still coming up in the morning sprint, we'll take a look at just how much money was spent on legal marijuana in Illinois on its first day. But first, it is the first weekend of the new year, and we've got a few events we think you'll want to check out. Stay with us. News for Now This Morning is back right after this.
639, we've been asking you to share your morning with us, and Linda sent this. She says the sun making its way through the fog this morning, and this is in Endeavor, Wisconsin. She said she's missing the snow. I think we all are. We could use a little blanket. It was nice to have it for a couple days, kind of freshen things up, clean it up. Otherwise, it looks so kind of just gross during the winter time. Brown, brown and yes. dry and less festive. Yeah, so thank you so much for sharing. Linda, if you've got a picture that you'd like to share with us, please do so. You can send it to us on our social media and just use the hashtag MyNews3Morning. Well, it is almost the weekend in the 608, and here's a quick look at what's going on with the help from our partners over at Madison Magazine. Oh, yeah. Tonight, the Wisconsin Punk Fest brings a nine-band lined up to the High Noon Saloon, including Gender Confetti. At the same exact time, the Majestic will be hosting the Wisconsin Hip Hop Fest with local favorite MC Rob Deasy. Lots of options there. Yeah, tomorrow night, the Wisconsin Jazz Fest back at the Majestic with Paul Diedrich and his big band headlining. And the Mead and Metal Fest at Boss Meadery will feature Madison-based and self-proclaimed most metal band on earth, Lords of the Trident. Boy, that's a tease right there. <laughs> if you're in the mood for some laughs, head over to Comedy on State Street to see Alex Moffat. He's a celebrity impressionist and current Saturday Night Live cast member. I thought I recognized yeah, him. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. That should be really fun. Great show. Local favorite among the younger set is Truly Remarkable Loon, who will be giving three free performances on Saturday on Overture Center's Rotunda stage. Mr. Loon promises to spin plates and unleash flying monkeys while teaching families <laughs> What he knows about Sir Isaac Newton. Something for everyone. <laughs> and of course, for all of the best in the Madison area, check out this month's issue of Madison Magazine on Stands Now. All right, 640 right now. And as we enter this first weekend of the new decade, of Ooh. course, we're all wondering about that forecast. And coming right up, our Miss Hattie McLean will have details on what we can expect. But first, it's January 3rd, 2020. We want to say happy birthday to Paisley, Owen, and all of the kiddos turning three today. Thanks for celebrating with us here on News 3 Now this morning. Clear, easy to understand forecast. Watch first alert weather. Look who's.
Welcome back. 634 on your Friday ahead of your weekend. A bit of a cloudy start, huh? Yeah, but it still feels decent outside. Yeah, we really can't complain, especially when Hattie reminds us of the polar vortex from last year. <laughs> <laughs> Just one year ago, it was almost dangerous to be outside. It was so cold. So luckily, we're not dealing with anything like that. But you're right. It is a cloudy start to the day. Not going to see a lot of sunshine today, but keep in mind we are adding several minutes each week right now. Here's a look at our daylight meter. We've added most of the daylight at the end of the day. Sunset is now 434, 10 minutes later than it was in the shortest day of the year. Sunrise is still pretty late. As we go through the coming weeks, though, we're going to start to add about 5 to 10 minutes of daylight each week. So when we get to a month from now, the first part of February, we'll be adding almost an hour of daylight. Again, of course, shy of the longest day of the year, which comes on June 20th, we'll add over six hours of daylight between now and then. But again, no sunshine in the forecast today. That's the bummer. We have cloudy skies right now. Those clouds extend all the way back through Minnesota into Canada today, so not a good chance for any clearing taking place. We also are watching the snow in the Dakotas. It is going to track to the south and east, but the latest forecast models have actually kept that storm system a little bit further to the west. So here's 5 p.m. Cloudy skies across southern Wisconsin. That snow a little bit closer to the storm system, tracking through southern Minnesota and central Iowa. Going through the evening hours, there's a chance that some of that snow may clip far southwestern Wisconsin, but that storm is out of here already by tomorrow morning. So the probability of precipitation pretty low as we go even through the overnight hours. Here's 11 p.m., still less than 20% chance to see any of that snow here in Madison. That lines up with the future track snow totals, again, keeping most of that accumulating precipitation west of the Mississippi River Valley. We're in inch to two of uh, new snow is expected. Now our temperatures this morning, 29 in the Dells. That's the cool spot. We're at 31 here in Madison. Temperatures are generally in the low 30s for southern Wisconsin. A little bit of a wind factor in. Those wind chill numbers are in the 20s early this morning. Here's a look at your future track forecast model. Again, mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures are not going to move much. We'll stop the map at noon today, right about where we are right now. Low 30s, some spots in the mid 30s heading towards the afternoon hours still cloudy skies with temperatures just climbing a couple of degrees should see our high temp right around 4 p.m. this afternoon again a chance for some light snow or flurries especially far southwestern Wisconsin late tonight but then already some clearing taking place for tomorrow here's a look at your extended forecast we have temperatures in the 30s this weekend pretty quiet conditions on Saturday Sunday it's going to get windy around here west winds gusting up to 30 miles an hour Temperatures, though, in the upper 30s. Here's our pet walk forecast. Oh. Look at that. I almost thought this was a painting or a picture, but wow. there's a couple of buds in a, a purse. Very or a bag vivid. There. Yeah. Cats and dogs getting along? <laughs> I guess so. In this picture, looks great. <laughs> so nice resolution think. for the new year. Let's go with it. <laughs> we can all get along, right? Thank you, Hattie. You're welcome. Stay with us. The morning sprint is up next. It's your.
It's 6.50, time for the morning sprint with a number of stories to update you on as you head out the door. That includes breaking news this morning. All Americans are now being advised to leave Iraq as the U.S. Defense Department says it has killed a high-level Iranian general. It happened at an attack at the Baghdad International Airport. The department says the military at the direction of President Trump conducted, quote, a defensive action by killing Qasem Soleimani. In a statement, the Pentagon said the general was actively developing plans to attack American diplomats and service members throughout the region. The U.S. says Soleimani approved the siege of the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. Democratic presidential candidates are tweeting their responses to the airstrike this morning. The candidates widely agree that Soleimani was dangerous, but believe the strike will escalate tensions in the area. Joe Biden compared it to President Trump, quote, tossing a stick of dynamite into a tinderbox. Higher tensions in the Middle East following the airstrike could cost you more at the pump. Oil prices are surging this morning in response to the strike, jumping more than 4% overnight. That's due to uncertainty from global investors who are trying to anticipate Iran's response to the attack. Previously, Iran has threatened to the supply of oil in the Persian Gulf, which is where roughly 20% of the world's oil travels through. Wisconsin businesses now have 30 days to comply with the FDA's new ban on flavored e-cigarettes. Christina, tell us more about that. Mo, thanks, Leah. Most fruit and mint-flavored cartridge-based vaping products are now illegal here in the U.S. Tobacco and menthol-flavored products are still legal, as the ban is meant to target products teens use the most. The CDC says 5% middle school students and 21% of high schoolers use e-cigarettes in the past month. And in 2019, the CDC confirmed 55 vaping-related deaths. Leah? very much. The first day of legal recreational marijuana sales in Illinois generated more than $3 million in sales. State officials count more than 77,000 transactions on New Year's Day. Illinois is the 11th state to allow the sale of recreational marijuana. Neighboring state Michigan legalized it on December 1st. They sold about $3.1 million in the first two weeks. The field of Democratic candidates is thinning out this morning ahead of this month's debate. Julian Castro is ending his campaign after failing to gain traction in a large field of candidates. The former Housing and Urban Development Secretary was the only Latino to run for president this cycle and ran a progressive campaign focused on immigration, housing and policing. A conservative law firm is asking a judge to find the Wisconsin Elections Commission in contempt until it clears more than 200,000 voters from the rolls. Last month, a judge ordered to purge voters who might have moved and didn't respond within 30 days to a notification from the commission. The bipartisan committee has deadlocked twice on attempts to remove voters while an appeal is pending. Wildfires continue to ravage parts of Australia, claiming at least 17 lives so far and forcing thousands to flee. More than 380 homes have been destroyed on the southern coast of New South Wales just this week. As he toured the devastation in one town, Prime Minister Scott Morrison was called an idiot and other insults. And our forecast today has a lot of clouds, not a lot of precipitation. Temperatures will climb from the low 30s this morning, only into the middle 30s this afternoon. Winds will be lighter from the northwest. As far as those snow chances tonight, looks like the best chance will be west of the Mississippi River Valley for some light snow accumulation. Thank you very much, Hattie. Madison police are asking for help finding a girl who's been missing for two weeks. Missingkids.org reports Anaya Coons is a runaway. The 13-year-old is 5'3 and weighs around 155 pounds. Police believe she could be with a woman in the Madison area. They could also be using an alias last name, Ruiz. You're asked to call the number on the screen if you have any information. The Indiana man arrested in connection with a 1994 murder investigation in Madison is pleading not guilty. Willie Coleman is accused of murdering 40-year-old Lulu Cunnigan. Police were sent to Freeport Road on Madison's west side in November of that year and pronounced Cunnigan dead at the scene. The 52-year-old was arrested after police say a DNA match linked Cunnigan to the crime. The man accused of fatally shooting his sister on Christmas Eve is being ordered to take a mental competency evaluation. Joseph Green's attorneys requested the exam, which will determine if there's enough evidence for a trial. The 57-year-old faces a first-degree intentional homicide charge for the death of his 63-year-old sister, Sheila. Police say he shot her multiple times at her home on South Midvale Boulevard. A Colorado man is facing multiple charges after allegedly running over the arm and leg of an officer in Waukesha. Court documents state that Thomas Chadwick went to a Kohl's to steal clothes. A criminal complaint states he refused to get out of the car and instead put it in reverse, running over the officer. Chadwick then led police on a chase before being arrested in Milwaukee. The 35-year-old is due back in court later this month.
Families living outside Wisconsin cities might have an even tougher time finding a doctor in the future. Wisconsin Public Radio is reporting on a shortage of med students coming from rural areas across the country. They made up less than 5% of all new med students in 2017. Right now, 20 of Wisconsin's 72 counties have no practicing psychiatrists. A group of Delta Airlines employees are suing Land's End, saying the uniforms provided by the company made them sick. The lawsuit claims the uniforms worn by flight attendants and some ground workers caused them to develop health issues. The suit claims employee tests found high levels of chemicals and heavy metals in the uniforms. Delta says it tested the uniforms and believes they're safe. We will not have a Packers game to watch this weekend, but we will find out who they'll play in the playoffs on Sunday. The team will host a divisional game at Lambeau on January 12th, which will pay huge dividends toward Green Bay's economy. This season, the Packers have played 10 games at Lambeau, meaning $150 million so far in economic impact. Add in the playoff game, and it jumps another $15 million. Just about 6.57, and Stacy K has a look at your first alert traffic. Hi, Stacy. Hi. All right, no problems just yet on the westbound Beltline, but it is starting to pick up between Stoughton and Seminole Highway. Inbound John Nolan is starting to pick up at the Rim Rock and North Shore Drive intersections as you head downtown. East Washington, not bad. Remember, the college kids don't come back until the 21st. And other main roads heading into the city, moving along at the posted speeds. No crashes or delays. With your first alert traffic, I'm Stacy Kett. Thank you, Stacy. Here's a live look from the Edgewater Skycam this morning. Just cloudy skies here across southern Wisconsin. Our forecast today has temperatures climbing just a few degrees. We're in the low 30s this morning. We'll top in the mid 30s this afternoon. Definitely not as mild as it was yesterday. We do have some more sunshine in the forecast for the upcoming weekend. Turns windy on Sunday a little warmer as well. All right, Hattie, thank you. And thanks so much for joining us this morning, folks. Take some time for your family this weekend, and we'll see you back here Monday morning.